Hi, my name is Mike. I'm here with Nitrogen Logic to demonstrate the latest in Connect Home Automation equipment. I'll show you what you get when you order a Nitrogen Logic prototype controller and how to set a controller up step by step to work with a Connect camera. Here's what you get with a Nitrogen Logic depth controller you have a power cable, Ethernet cable, and a USB recovery cable. Of course, you also have the controller itself. It has a USB port for recovery if necessary. A USB host port for connecting to the Kinect camera or another compatible depth camera. And a gigabit ethernet port for connection to your network. The power is connected from the opposite end. The automation controller also includes a DVD with the Palace Designer software for configuring the automation system. Here is how to set up your Nitrogen Logic depth controller. First, connect to a gigabit network. Then, apply power to the controller. Finally, add the connect. When the controller's blue light begins flashing and the Kinect's light turns solid green, the controller is ready to be configured through the web interface. With the controller connected to the network, we can now access its web interface and complete the setup process. The default host name is logic-controller- and then the last three bytes of the MAC address, .local. We will be redirected to the depth controller web interface on port 8089. The perspective view shows the depth information coming from the camera. The overhead, side, and front views are generated from that depth information on the controller. There's also an experimental WebGL interface that is not yet complete and is included only for compatibility testing. On the standard web interface, we can create automation trigger zones. If we switch to the WebGL interface, the zones can be viewed in three dimensions. I can be seen walking through the room into and out of the zone. Once you've created all of your trigger zones in the web interface, you can use the text-based protocol available on port 14308 to integrate the depth controller into your automation system. Setting up an automation controller is similar to a depth controller. You start with gigabit network and electricity, but instead of connecting to a camera, we will add a USB hub a powered USB hub to ensure there's plenty of power for devices, an input device, in this case a Griffin PowerMate, and an output device, for us a USB to RS-485 or DMX-512 converter. The DMX adapter will be connected to a 4-channel DMX dimmer. Finally, we'll set our DMX dimmer to a base address of 1 and connect our lights to channels 1 and 3. The controller is now ready to be configured in the Palace Designer software and web interface. To begin configuring your automation controller, insert the Palace Designer software DVD into your computer's DVD drive. Then load instructions.html from the root directory of the DVD. We will go through the setup process for a Windows system, but Mac OS X and Linux are similar. 
The first step is to download and install the VirtualBox Virtual Machine software. Choose the correct download for your operating system and then begin the setup process. The default setup options are fine for our purposes. Make sure you install all of the device drivers. Now start VirtualBox. Click File, Import Appliance, then choose the palacedesigner.ova file from the Palace Designer DVD. Click Next to view the details of the Palace Designer Virtual Machine Appliance. Be sure to leave the Reinitialize the MAC address of all network cards checkbox unchecked to avoid network problems. When you are ready to continue, click Import and then Agree. VirtualBox will then import the appliance from the DVD to your hard drive. Once the virtual machine has been imported, we need to double check the network settings. Make sure that you're using a bridged adapter. Also make sure that the adapter name matches the network card that is connected to the automation controller. We can now start the virtual machine. Within a short time you will see the virtual machine desktop. Read the messages that are displayed to understand how VirtualBox handles the mouse, then check Do Not Show This Message Again. We will now set up a basic automation system using the hardware we connected to the controller. Double click the Show Controller Status Pages icon on the Virtual Machine desktop. This will bring up a Firefox window with the controller's status page. Click the Download Palace Template link, then open with Palace Designer and click OK. The automation controller sends a palace design that has pre-populated objects for the hardware we attached earlier. We can see that the palace design from the controller contains objects for the Griffin PowerMate and the USB to DMX adapter. Since the USB to DMX adapter is also a USB to serial adapter, the controller isn't sure whether we want to use it for DMX or serial output. Since we're using DMX, we'll delete the serial object. Now we need to build the logic that will control our lights. We'll move this object over to create some space. We will use a simple latch for our switch, as well as an integer accumulator for the light brightness. We will use a source selector, also called an input selector, to switch the value on and off. We set the range for our brightness to be a minimum of 10 and a maximum of 255 because the DMX protocol uses brightness values from 0 to 255 and we don't want the knob to fade all the way to darkness. We also need to set the input selector to a single input and allow none. Now we connect the dots. Recall that we used channel 1 and three for our lights before. To create a wire from an output port, double click that output port. To delete a wire, click on that wire until it's highlighted and then press the delete key. The Griffin PowerMate acts as a rotary encoder, so providing its input into an accumulator allows us to make a total value. We'll connect our final brightness value back to the PowerMate's LED input so that the brightness of the light on the PowerMate corresponds to the brightness of our lights. Let's give the objects some more meaningful names. We'll call this one Switch because it acts as a switch. We'll call this one brightness because it contains the brightness. And we'll call this one gate because it acts like a gate that lets the brightness signal through when the switch is on, but does not let anything through when the switch is off. Let's give ourselves a little more room. We'll select everything and drag it down. 
we should also save our work. We will go save as into our palace designs directory and give it a name, PowerMate Light 1. Finally, let's make some parameters controllable over the network as well. We will want to go to our switch and export its state parameter, as well as our brightness object and export its value parameter. We're now ready to upload this design to the device. We'll go to the File menu, click Upload to Device. The controller is detected and placed in the input box. Click OK. The transfer to the device succeeded. If we switch back to the controller's status page and reload, we can see the switch and brightness parameters that we exported. If we come back to our automation system, we can see that the PowerMate's light is now glowing dimly. Also looking at the controller's status page, we can see our exported parameters from before. If we enter a new value for one of the parameters, say enter 255 for the brightness value, and then press enter, the lights in the room go up to full brightness, as well as the light on the PowerMate. We can also test the switch parameter. We'll set it to zero to turn the lights off, and back to one to turn the lights on again. Of course, the power mate itself can also be used to control the lights. If we turn the knob, the brightness of the lights should go up and down. And if we tap the knob, the lights should toggle. Apparently, we have some debugging to do, so we'll switch back to the palace designer. It looks like the input to the switch object is wired to the wrong port. We'll make the correction, save our changes, and upload to the device. Now, if we tap the knob, the lights will work correctly. The system updates very quickly, so you can tap the knob as fast as you like. The web browser outside of the virtual machine can also access the controller's status page and change values. Now it's time to put it all together and make some magic happen. You can see I've created some zones in advance in the depth controller running my home theater. For demonstration purposes, I've created a zone called Captain's Chair, which is next to the touch screen interface, and Office Door, which is next to my office. We will use these zones in an automation system to control some lights. Let's take a look at our earlier automation design. For our depth controller interface, we can get rid of everything except the USB to DMX output. We'll start with a multi-zone value object. This will receive data from the depth controller. Next, we add a sample and hold object. It's under counters and latches. This will preserve its input values on its output when this hold input is 1. Each zone's occupied value is either a 0 or a 1. We need to convert this to the 0 to 255 range used by the DMX object. So we'll add an integer range scale. Since we want the sample and hold object to sample while we're connected and hold while we're not connected, we put in a NOT gate that will be wired between the connected output and hold input. Now let's set our object's parameters. We have two zones, so we'll set the zone count parameter on the multi-zone value object to two. The default attribute is the occupied value. Our first zone is captain's chair and it needs to be entered exactly as it appears in the depth controller. Our second zone is office door. Our sample and hold object needs two inputs, one for each zone, as well as our integer range scale. The integer range scale also needs to have an input range of 0 to 1 and an output range of 0 to 255. If you hover over an object's title on the canvas, you can see a tooltip that explains what that object does. 
Now we connect everything together. We're using the same channels 1 and 3 as in our earlier demonstration system. Now we'll give meaningful names to all of our objects. Let's save to a new file before we get too far along. We will go File, Save As, and enter a new name, Theater Demo 1. Just to show that you can control more than just lights, let's drop in a Wake on LAN plugin. You enter the MAC address here of the computer you want to wake up. We can connect the Wake input of our Wake on LAN object to the occupied output of our multi-zone value depth camera object. We would then simply need to enter the MAC address of a computer that has Wake on LAN enabled. The computer to Wake needs to be connected to the same Layer 2 network as the automation controller. One last step before we're ready is we need to set the correct host name of our depth controller on our multi-zone value object. In this case, it's theatercam.local. We'll save. and upload to the device. Lightsbox.local The automation controller is now running our new design. Let's switch back to our native web browser for a moment and take a look at the depth camera controller. We have a tab open for the standard interface as well as the experimental WebGL interface. The 3D WebGL interface really helps us get a sense of the size and physical location of these zones. Let's open a new tab to access our Automation Controller's status page. As we can see, it's running our new design. Let's give it a test. The captain's chair zone is tied to a light in the theater. If I enter the captain's chair zone, that light will turn on. When I leave the zone, the light turns off. Since our lights are connected directly to the occupied value for each zone without any additional logic, Entering and leaving the zones causes the lights to turn on or off immediately. The office door zone is similarly connected to a light in the office. That's all we have time for for now. To order your own depth or automation controller, Visit nitrogenlogic.com and use the Contact Us link to submit a request. Thanks for watching.